Alright, welcome back. So you and Surkov met at the embassy during the attack. I could have timed it better had I known the embassy was about to be attacked. Yes, that's the odd part about the affair. Almost none of the cameras were able to catch sight of the attackers. <laughs> and few eyewitness accounts as well. Something about armored soldiers with blue night vision lenses. Yeah, true. I'm curious. Yeah, they're like ghosts. Not to the Marines. The bullets these ghosts fired were very real. I saw the casualty reports. What happened to the Marines was my fault. My arrival provoked the attack on the embassy, I'm sure. Now don't be down on yourself. No one knew the embassy was going to be attacked, did they? Someone did. Well, I hear most of the Marines died doing their duty. Bastard. Who knows if many of the terrorists died? Perhaps. Most likely not, since they found few bodies at the scene. But you, you handled yourself exceptionally well. You must have had help. You're truly a skilled agent, <coughs> Norton. But one man against several highly trained squads? No, the odds aren't that. Sometimes the best method is to send a man in alone. Good help is hard to find, and it usually slows me down anyway. Hmm. Something wrong? No. But remind me not to play poker with you. <laughs> well, with the attack on the embassy and everything to follow, you certainly got the most out of your first few days in Moscow. Yeah, I did. One would almost think therapy would be in order. I have some doctors I could recommend for you. The first step is admitting you have a problem. But back to the reason you were at the embassy. Sokov. Yeah, I sort of expected more from XKGB when I met him, but maybe that's part of his charm. So you know about his past? Yep, him going legit, starting his corporation. Sorry, corporations. Trying to bring capitalism to Russia, the whole bit. I see. Sokov didn't seem to welcome your help, even after you saved his life. Well, we talked, and he eventually calmed down and agreed not to shoot me. Eventually. True. But he did tell you who had the Hellbent missiles, and he gave you a name. Yes. Constantine Brako. Ah, Brako. What is it about We're going to have to investigate the dulcet. I mean, was a businessman. They pretend to obey the law. Constantine. There's He's a gangster, a man. He gotta be thug. Up and coming Russian mobster meets rogue American agent. What could the two of you possibly Hip talk? hop, slut, hoes. How oh, video killed the radio star. <laughs> That's right, he was stuck in the 80s. I forgot. Like chips and gaming. No, you know, let's check it out. I don't feel like watching TV. Who is contacting me, friends? What do they want? I don't mean a thing. We had a new recruit join the agency today. We put him through the hazing ritual. He handled the guards and gunfire with nerves of steel. Except for, well, when he finally came into the weapons range, I could smell something a little fierce. Turns out he crapped himself during the exercise. On the one hand, he was drugged, terrified, disoriented, and shat himself. On the other hand, he was such a pro, he didn't let a jock strap full of waste get between him and an ace performance. I guess we're still trying to figure out what to do with him. So as for the important question, miss me, Mina? Do I miss you in this sense? That I wish I was back in gray box? No. Do I miss you in the sense that we need to cut through the small talk and resolve the matter of our sexual tension? Yes. I think I should keep it funny with her. Of course I need someone to watch me shoot targets and tell me what a huge stud I am for only rarely soiling myself. Wait, are you trying to flirt with me, Miss Tang? I'm a busy man. I only Miss Tang. I'm gonna do funny. Hopefully that comes back good. Um, 
guess we can investigate the clearinghouse, but I still don't have any extra cash. So that's stupid. This really does remind you of Mass Effect, doesn't it? Your spaceship going down the hallway. The conversation system. So let's see. Oh, should I review my dossiers? Intel. Find out who these assholes are. Intel. Individual. Oh yeah, nothing new. Early 40. This bitch is in her early 40s. She's an ecstasy age. I don't want to get into her. Alright, Braco. Born in the slums of Moscow during the Cold War, Konstantin Braco soon proved he had more than enough resolve to survive. By the age of 14, Breka was pimping out his three sisters, aggressively defending his territory, and underfitted to kill older rivals, looking to force him out of his position. Breko gained a deserved reputation as a quick-witted kid who was just the right level of psycho to be an effective soldier. One of the bosses of the largest mafia group in Moscow is rumored to have taken him under his wing and then accepted him into his inner circle. Breko's rise in the criminal world began. Constantine has always showed a tendency for any of his rivals with knives. Well, he may have one or two of his buddies rough up someone to get them warmed up for the main course. He you know, will inevitably want to finish the main target himself. Well, judging by that, I think we gotta take this motherfucker seriously and be aggressive. Championic. Age 26. Born in St. Petersburg is Pavel Vanyanev, I can't pronounce these Russian names. He grew up in a towering young man, found a basketball in his mid-teens. A local gym owner took him under his wing, convinced Vanyanev that he would be a phenomenal boxer. The owner was not disappointed. For his 18th birthday, Pavel was winning bouts, and he became a champion, blah, blah, blah. All right. We don't have much more on Grigori. All right, so I think we gotta take this guy, the 80s throwback brother, seriously. And we're gonna come at him aggressively. We gotta assault his mansion. Let's start the mission. Eat some chips. You love salt and shit, pepper or like kettle chips. So good. Outskirts of Moscow. Dudes, I gotta lower this because it got wicked loud, wicked quick. I'm gonna start a new part. Be back.